okay friends now here we come to our discussion about the complement system and in previous lecture we've just started about the complement system we have discussed about uh, the basics uh, of the complement system now in this particular video we'll be focusing on classical pathway of complement activation system now in any kind of complement system what are the key players of that system now again for the complement system we are having the key players so let me write down here the key players so let let us write here key players of complement system now the key players like always here also the complement system key players are one is uh, say the complement proteins complement proteins are simply known as C proteins CX that means it could be C1 it could be C2 3 4 and so on so C or complement proteins is there we also need bacterial cell not only bacteria but also pathogenic cells because uh, for what we are generating this complement system remember for pathogens we are doing this for pathogens so we must need the presence of pathogens here so pathogens are also required and more specifically not only single pathogens but what we require is uh, the antigen rather we can write antigen because in this case it is the attachment of this complement proteins to the antigen surface which is provided by the pathogen surface like bacteria surface or viruses or something like that okay and what we also need in this case we also need some other cells of immune system or the key cells or say the killer cells of the immune system now what are the killer cells so let me write it here again and we also require the killer cells of immune system like macrophages like dendritic cells and so on so so macrophages uh, killers uh, like killer cell and dendritic cells and and so on okay so we need these three key player for any kind of complement system now in the very first kind or the classical type of complement system uh, it was previously first uh, type of complement system that that was previously discussed dis discovered actually now among this classical system it is the simplest system of all of this complement pathway now again in this case also we have we are having complement proteins pathogen as well as the killer cells but remember one thing very careful for this purpose because for the activation of this classical pathway of complement system so <clears throat> don't forget it it's a very very important concept for this uh, part of complement activation via the classical pathway in this case we require the presence of antibodies for the activity okay so what we need we need the presence of antibody here for this classical part pathway it means so let me change the color here it means we must have access to antibody for the functioning of this classical pathway activation but for the other type like for for the alternative pathway we don't need the presence of antibody okay so both kind is important because remember for the for the very first time when your tissues are first exposed to pathogens then you don't have the antibody remember if you uh, get the previous concepts about immunology which is the basic concepts of immunology that when the first time bacteria enters bacteria or any pathogen enters into the cell now what the cell need to produce it start to fight against it by the natural process like inflammation like uh, other cell uh, uh, other process which is the cellular mode but not the humoral mode because humoral mode is much more specific but it needs time to produce this humoral response because it depends on the antibody because antibodies will be produced after the activation of T cells and then the those T cells will activate B cells and then all the things will happen so for that purpose at the very beginning we don't have access to antibodies in our body specifically tagged to those pathogenic receptors so those cases we must have uh, alternative pathway going on in our body for as a humoral response okay but when we have access to antibodies then most of it most of the complement pathway is going to be activated by the classical system or classical pathway okay now let us look at classical pathway now here 
for the classical pathway we are having the complement proteins now the complement proteins uh, for the classical pathway we are having c1 c2 c4 these three things now in any kind of complement pathway let me tell you this is another very important and it's also common part of all now we are going to study it slightly differently this all of the, these three complement pathways actually uh, this major two complement pathway now in any case of complement systems there are major key proteins key complements out there and what are those major key complements now in case of any kind of pathway of complement system the major player are c3 and c5 i am writing them in the different color so just keep this thing in your mind that we are having c1 c2 c4 and all this but c3 and c5 these two complements are the most important complement proteins okay now what we need to do we need to produce protein complexes those are again can be made via other complements can degrade this c3 and c5 so we need to produce some peptides we need to produce some protein degrading complexes made up with this three to to degrade c3 and c5 okay now we can make make a protease with c1 c2 c4 to degrade c3 we can make up uh, a protease with C C1 to uh, C1 C2 C3 and C4 to degrade C5. So this is very important because when we cleave C5 complement, remember we can cleave each of these complement proteins. It will give rise to two segments. One is a B, one is A. B1 is a most of the cases larger one. It will bind to the bacterial cell. Small one will be released. So in this case, we at last we need to cleave this C5. Then only. It will be produced. It will be properly production or properly functional unit will be produced for the future step, which is called the lytic step. Now, for for the beginning, and again, for your understanding's sake, I must tell this that in any kind of complement pathway, what is the big picture? What is the actual thing that are going to happen? Now, in any kind, bacteria enters into our body. So, just focus here. So, say uh, this is uh, say a tissue. So this is epithelial lining and suppose we have a wound here and through this wound bacteria so let us draw the green bacteria as a green goblin type so bacteria is coming here so these are the antigen representing the bacteria so bacteria will start invading now the bacteria is here it's invading into our tissue now so this is wound and there are cells that are coming here so there are macrophages dendritic cells and all them all of them are together so say uh, this is the macrophages this is the dendritic cells and all the cells will uh, are coming here for the for the killing of this bacteria actually there are a lot of more bacteria so let me draw this uh, scientific lot more bacteria there than the immune cells so they come and uh, colonize there now what will happen in this case now this cell can start engulfing this bacteria but this engulfment process that that will be carried here are slow sluggy floppy until and unless they will be tagged with some complement proteins so what we need to do we need to tag this bacterial cell with complement protein so that they can be engulfed very fast rapidly okay first thing is that second thing is also that using this complement system we can start this activity very fast because most of the time remember again in this tissue we cannot have access to these cells so this is a scenario this is a lucky scenario for our body where already the macrophages and dendritic cells are present in our uh, infected uh, tissue at that time but it is not always happening so in those cases where you don't have these cells when you don't have macrophages don't have dendritic cells and so on in those situation what will be the case in those case we must have what what we are having uh, here in the tissue all the time throughout the time we are having this blue proteins we are having this black proteins now what are this blue and black proteins these are the complement proteins for example now these complements will come and attach to this bacterial cell so so they will bind with this bacterial cells after the binding to the bacterial cell it will tag the bacterial cell now what we can do then then the bacterial cell can be engulfed by other 
uh, cells like macrophages. Now, from where those macrophages will come? Because they are not present there. In those cases, these complements can be cleaved. Now, cleaving part of this, for example, say this is a complement. After cleaving it, we are generating two different things. We are generating two segments. One is a larger segment. Another one is a smaller segment. Now, this large segment will go, go and tag the bacterial cell. On the other hand, this small segment will give the signal. It will give the signal to other cells. Cells like macrophages, cells like dendritic cells and so on. Now, from there, using the signal, macrophages and dendritic cells. So, say this is a macrophage. Macrophage will come. And the macrophage, dendritic cells and these cells, using the signal generated by the small subunit of complement, can come and engulf the bacterial cell or engulf the pathogen. So this is how whole thing is actually working. So that's why what we need to do, we need to tag the cells. We need to tag the cell which just entered into our body. And we need to kill them using this complement activation. Okay. Now in this classical pathway, what is so what what is the portion we are going to discuss now is this region so this we are having the complement now that complement is degraded so the journey start from here so we are having the complement proteins this is the key player so remember key player number one here I am putting one here so from here it, it is divided into two segments one is a large segment large segment is called B Small segment is called A. Remember that. Now this large small B seg uh, large segment B goes and tag with the bacterial cell. Now it will mark the bacterial cell. Now two things complement system can achieve. One thing is that in this case it can trigger the cellular response. That means it can sub it can provide the signal to other cells, engulfing cell, macrophages, to come and kill this. This is the first round of response. So the first round of response, or uh, uh, not first round, uh, it's the two types of response. So the first type of response that we are seeing here is simply called cellular mode activation. Cellular mode activation via this complement system. Now there is another activation. So this is a one type of activation. Okay. But another type of activation that are carried out by this complement protein is to lyse the cell. So it is not only uh, can call upon these cells, but it can also kill the cell on its own. So when, suppose there are no cells, there are no macrophages in the vicinity, in the close proximity to anywhere where the infection is happening. So what we can do? Simply the bacteria will thrive, right? But no. In our immunity system, in our immune system, complements are always present. So what they can do, they, can, they don't require these cells for the killing of bacteria. They can kill using these cells, but they don't require all the time. So what they can do, they can kill the in invading pathogen on their own. So what they can do here, so, so suppose if we erase some of them, uh, let us draw here. So we are having this bacteria. And these are the antigens. So again, complements are coming. Complement proteins are tagging into it. And then what they can do? They can produce holes in the bacterial cell. Yes, it's a very cool way to kill somebody, putting holes in their body. So it can create hole. As a result, this bacterial cell will die. That's how. This is the second mode. And this mode, let us look uh, right here, this mode. This mode is called, again, it's a uh, lytic mode activation so two modes can be there one is a lytic mode another one is a cellular mode activation or the activation or a macrophage or or phagocytic mode activation so the phagocytic mode when is the when the phagocytic mode is activated then it requires the other cells like macrophages dendritic cells to come and uh, do the job but when they are activating lytic mode they are doing the job on their own Okay, so this is a very important thing and basic thing you must learn before we are, we'll be discussing about uh, uh, the pathway in the detailed manner. Okay, so this is it. Now let us talk about uh, the classical pathway in detail. Okay.